good day and welcome back to elementary 72 gaming yes i am out farming as i told you four hours of farming a day will definitely get me above the line and in case you want to see where my wallet is sitting yeah i am i'm at 239 plaques that is the bigger figure the more important figure from everything that i have i have suffered a heavy hit uh, one of the days with a major glitch in the game where my ship stayed in combat after i got disconnected and there wasn't any warp disruption or anything of the sort it just didn't leave combat even when i ordered it to warp away it didn't leave so yeah that cost me quite a bit in terms of repairs i managed to kill that entire encounter but uh, not before really digging deep to actually get out of that situation I can't activate it. I forgot about that. Wait, I can't activate my micro warp drive? Okay, I'm shocked at that. This isn't um, a warp disrupt, uh, a warp scrambler. It's just a warp uh, disruptor. I'm forgetting the difference between the two. So yeah. Okay, so the reason behind this video is I'm going to go through a list of ships that are going to be useful for you moving forward into the next DLC. And when I say DLC, I mean the next expansion of content. And by that, I am talking about obviously scanning. What are the ships that you're going to want to have? What are the ships that you need to own? Well, there's a short list and I'm just going to go through them as fast as possible. You're going to need a brawler type ship. Now, your brawler type ships are very limited in terms of what you can use. You can use a quick railgun uh, short range burst fire weapon. So you can use something like a Ferox Guardian. That is going to be fantastic for you to use. Now the Ferox Guardian can be used in more than one situation and in more than one location. So consider it a very special case for usage. Right now, I'm, I'm not going to go any further on that topic that is it you can use a ferox guardian you understand that it's a guardian it has excess defense it overloads itself it's quite good against other ships which don't have that much of defense you have seen a part of our fights in the the mastered series if you haven't you can go back you can look through all of the channels that's savat myself uh havoc uh eternal echoes and rambo uh, I don't think Rambo has a YouTube channel, but you can hear what he had to say when you were playing, when you were fighting, when you were having fun, or if you are on his server, you can always uh, ask him about it in Discord. But nonetheless, those are the ships that are going to do well when it comes to this next upgrade. Now, in the short range, you can see that I literally obliterate anything with the quick fire mode of this particular vessel that I'm using, and that is the Drake. But there are also other ships that can be used to really obliterate the enemy in these close corners. Okay, I missed it. But nonetheless, that doesn't really hurt too much. Why haven't I launched missiles yet? Not a problem, I am not really stressed about it. Doesn't have that much of firepower to destroy me regardlessly. Okay. 
Okay, so brawlers are your way forward. Now, obviously, playing and talking, I said, is not something that I'm very good at. And here's exactly what you're going to have to think of when it comes to brawlers. Brawlers have the advantage in the fact that they can fight in close quarters. They are generally uh, stacked out with excess defense. You're not going to have a brawler with uh, insufficient defense. You're not going to have someone running around with a brawler class vessel that doesn't have uh, excess power. So, for example, my Drake is an example of a brawler. I have a sufficient amount of power on it that it can last in a fight against these small ships. The only catch to it is it isn't that good against very large ships. So battleships are really a weakness of this particular vessel. Anything that runs large um, debuff skills, large neutralizers or large... Um, what is the other one? Neutralizers or Nosferatu are really going to be a trouble to this particular ship. And that is something that I do know and I do try and cover my self when it comes to that uh, feature. I try my best. Okay, come on. I'm going straight after the web of fire. And there we go. Now I already know that I'm really risking my ship the way I'm fighting right the second. And there I go. Full scale assault. Now the reason why I always take all the loot as I said is because I use it to gain extra speed and momentum to getting the next ship. But here's something else to note with this entire crazy strategy of mine. When it comes to a fight like the one I'm in right now. If I use the right combination of firepower, I don't have to worry about anything really getting under my guns or really hurting my ship too much. As you can see, I have over 78% and this is something you're going to get with brawlers. Brawlers are the meta for the next section of this game and you are going to want to run similar setups to this. However, instead of the double web of fires and the target painter, you might go double web of fire and a warp disruptor now instead of warp disruptor i think there's the warp scrambler it might be a better choice than the warp disruptor i'm not 100 percent sure on it just yet but i think that would be a far better option for some of the players in the game now in no way should you quote me as it being the only option or anything of the sort it is a very good option when it comes to fighting other players purely because of its versatility in the close range combat aspect. Let me get rid of the big damage dealer. Once he is down, I can actually do excess damage in this front quarter. Right now, I am taking out the major damage dealer first and then I'll move on to the secondary damage dealer and once they are gone, I don't have to worry about my shield dropping too far. Because once they are out of it, the big hits are coming from two small ships. All I've got to do is let my ship ramp up perfectly and I'll be through without much of a problem. Let me just start up this regen again. I'm starting ahead of time, way ahead of time, because I don't want to drop below 50. Below 50 you take excess damage. And once he is gone, it's, it's not even a use to the enemy to keep shooting me. There's it, and he is out of the picture. That means I now suffer less damage. I also can activate that. And I can deactivate that immediately. Now, the reason for it is quite simple. Push through. Okay, back to the meta. I know I'm getting distracted. A lot of stuff has been leaking from my um, PC play into this. I know that it does make it a bit weird and a bit different from the way that I normally would do things but I'm really sorry for that it's just the way that things rumble in my head okay so the next thing to note when it comes to sorry when it comes to the brawling aspect is the other fittings that are going to make it a lot better for you to play and that is your weapons 
C-type weapons are definitely the best when it comes to damage output. If you want to do things quickly, they are the king. There is nothing that's going to topple them anytime soon, but there is a warning with it. Even though they are, as I'm saying, the best for combat, they aren't the best all-round weapons. And you can quote me on that one. They aren't the best all-round weapons because they are not cost-effective. And with this next set of um, of uh, difficulty coming in, you are going to experience a lot less when it comes to having these ships available and these items available to you. You might see as much as a 50% decrease in what you can get your hands on. And I'm not even joking about that, a 50% decrease in what you can get your hands on because the market is going to become that much more uh, reduced in quantity. If you're using insurance to get your weapons back, yes, that's the easiest way to get it back. But think about this carefully. If you're running a ship and you know that you're not going to do the cheap style or the free-to-play style, keep in mind you might need excess insurance if you're going out to low sec to do missions. Now, I haven't discussed doing low sec missions with the new meta as yet. So here is the basics on it. Number one, if you're going to do a high sec mission, uh, not sorry, not a high sec, a low sec mission, you need to be ready to run. Now, if you're going to be ready to run, what does that mean? Warp stabilization gear? Yeah, that will help you in some parts, but if they're running a scrambler, it's not going to help you at all. So you basically in big trouble if they have the right set of disruption against you. So keep that in mind. It's going to make a very big difference to everything that you do in the future. Whew. Okay, that was a quick and easy. This here should be off already. Okay, now I'm gonna have a little bit of a break with the few seconds that it takes for me to jump. There's gonna be a big jump in my income. I'll be past 10 million in a few minutes. So here are the things, wait, let's see how long did that take me. I literally started this mission as I started the recording. So 10 minutes to this mission. A shocker, with the increased damage that some of those ships were doing, which was a very sneaky thing added in, it definitely made a big difference to how I completed the mission. They had more damage dealing, they had less health. Okay, so back to the main topic. So when you go out to low sec, you're gonna have to really shape up your brawling. If you're going into low sec and you're risking that factor of fighting players, you don't want to be using C-type weapons. They're way too expensive. You're gonna be wanting to go down to faction class uh, in the Republic section. Republic is very close to C-Type, but it's always way cheaper than C-Type weapons. If you don't believe me, let me just show you quickly on the market. I'll just show you some missiles. Now, missiles are one of my favorite weapons. Their ability to hit a target really makes them versatile, but the timing that it takes is what's the killer to most players. You most probably could finish a mission twice as fast with railgun brawling, and that is in the close range like what I'm doing right now. But the catch is, this has seven weapons on it, and, oh wait, uh, high slots, I'm making four missiles. Okay, so let's close this. We don't even have to look directly at the prices, we just need to go down to the regular missiles, here we go. Okay, as you can see, civilian is 6,000, challenger is 200,000 right and you go all the way down to domination and as you can see it's 1.3 million i don't think there's any available if there is it, it's gonna be very easy to get my hands on i i've never seen people selling domination medium missile launches i know you get them in the rapids i think my game might be frozen in the background but nonetheless as you can see here's the basics you can see the discipline medium and the C type are very expensive. Compared to these lower class weapons, Republic Fleet, True Sanchez, uh, Dread Garista mediums, they're all way cheaper. If you had to go with a Keldari medium instead of a Challenger, you are paying quite a bit more, but you're getting a lot more firepower. When I say a lot more, I don't, I don't mean worthy of the price increase, but you are getting quite a bit of firepower. A few million to introduce into your ship, a 20 million, and you're getting that 10 seconds off your mission, or 20 seconds. 
against the C type was going to give you a way bigger lead. There's it, 44, and let me show you where this here is. This here should be 40. Oh, it's not even there, 38. Okay, so you can see there's a big jump. Disciple is 41, and domination class is 40. So then if I'm correct, this is the only one that's available right now. 39. Yeah, let's see what this is. 39 as well. Okay, so as you can see, there's a two damage increase per second. And two per second makes a big difference. You might not think that it makes a big difference, but your research should be added into it. Yeah, game lagged me into a endless spiral. This happens all the time. It's not to do with my signal, it's to do with the game. Well, let me just do this and see what it does. Okay, give me a second, I'll be back now. Okay, I'm back and we're getting straight back into that uh, discussion at the point that I stopped it. So, when you're going into this next section of EVE, as I said, when you're going out, you might just want to upgrade your weapons one or two, but you don't want to go for those heavy weapons. Just consider it carefully. That's 40 million to a medium missile. If I take uh, the full six or the full seven for my ship, seven times 40 is a crazy figure. Seven times 40 is 280. 280 million just for the weapons and that has to be insured it becomes very heavy on my insurance and it means that running free to play becomes very difficult if i end up in a tight bind however you could also do it in this way you could run the cheaper 4 million weapons and that is not going to cost you 280 million that's going to cost you 28 million that's two days worth of play to get the weapons easy no problem and you can just insure your ship and that's as simple as it gets insuring it 28 million on top of it makes no difference it's the fluctuation value so there's also going to be massive increases in the price of c types coming up with the next uh, patch when it comes to scans i have said that already but those price increases should hurt that little leeway that i was talking about you should get a increase of about 30 to 40 percent on those prices so it's going to instantly skyrocket you to uh, a nice bigger total and it will make your insurance a lot more expensive it also means that holding those systems if you do have any which you have bought in excess at this moment might be worth a profit later so if you bought a a c-type weapon for 30 million because you managed to get lucky you can sell it for 70 million in another week's time or in a few days time actually because the patch is coming out in a few days and if I'm correct that is scanning Whew, okay yeah so that's June the month of June and then next month will be the big year when it comes to everything everything will be reaching that one year mark everything will be solidifying getting ready for the next stage in combat Let's move in. So what you're going to need if you're doing the low sec uh, missions is you're going to need defense. You're going to need ships like the Cinnabar which is sitting there. You're going to need ships like the Gila. You're going to need ships that are faction cruisers. Faction battleships will help you but they won't be as effective as some of the other ships are. So you're going to use these small ships and you're going to use them in that situation to fight now if you're going to go in with the big ship here are the warnings balgon is a fantastic pvp ship nightmare isn't if anybody gets in under the guns on a nightmare you're finished there is no way you can avoid it if you are going with the nightmare make sure that you are paired up with a good fleet and make sure that others in your fleet have battleships i know that that is a bit of a heavy ask but it is something that will help you tremendously Okay, let me push in. Should lock on, there we go. Okay, so here is why you want to have a faction battleship on your side when you are facing up against your next level enemies. Number one, 
the faction battleship is going to give you a nice solid chunk of defense example the nightmare you've got this big defense and let's say that you pay it up with uh, I'm forgetting the name of the ship the raven if i'm correct gila and raven i'm i'm not 100% sure i know it's the garista um faction battleship but nonetheless that scorpion looking raven yeah it's the raven is going to give you this massive massive firepower paying the two up gives you a nice way to fight players who get too close especially considering the fact that you can use all those advantages of your two ships everybody using uh web of fires is going to get you a nice slow down ship and all you've got to do to make up for the lack in defense is blast them away as fast as possible now this one is different from the first one as you can see i took a lot less damage i didn't even activate my um oh i'm only using one of these as well <laughs> okay so when you're using that partic particular combination of just two ships you're capable of blasting out quite a bit of damage however if you have a bendicator or balgon pvp is your field they're not going to run away from you the balgon will knock out their defense capabilities and you can blast through them even if they're sitting in a fleet filled with uh, moa guardians if they come in with a fleet of battleships it's up to whoever has the better pvp setup and that can depend on your research and your weapon technology it also depends on your playstyle in particular so don't count it as a definite win against a match if people show up in things like uh, a dominix they too far away all you've got to do is warp out of your mission and they are now in trouble because they have to face off against your mission against all the remaining ads and if they finish it for you it's 300 million for you if they don't go up against it and kill any ships they lose out any reward from being such a sponge and not being willing to spend the 300 million to get the mission to start with so that is how it will work for you in low sec but the big catch is you can't use a big ship on its own even if you are in a phantasm which is a fantastic pvp ship i am not going to deny the phantasm's hierarchy in pvp if you have a phantasm you can take it out and you can fight in pvp however against these players who are going to gank you they will never be doing it solo scanning removes an entire slot on the ship so obviously the scanning ship isn't going to be part of the fight so there's always going to be a second or third person and if you are heading out into these fights you most probably going to want a fleet to come with you instead of going solo so just by the logic of it you can expect to see a lot of players running around in little roaming fleets to actually hurt your ship quickly who i know that is a mouthful to actually say but there we go that that is what you have to expect from the next few months in this game now another thing to look out for when it comes to these roaming fleets is their composition if i am correct they're going to have a debuff and they're going to have a tank so the debuff and tank are two of the most important people to take care of and there's obviously a good way to go through it and that is take out the tank and take out the debuff then take out your heavy assault now you even see me doing this in some of them in some cases the debuff isn't good enough to knock me out completely so i'll take out the assault first i'm not activating my access right now for some police i'm waiting for the new wave and there we go this is the one that i want to kill and there we go now this is the exact reason that i would go with a forward facing assault strategy it makes it a lot easier for me to get rid of the problematic individuals now there is the first one second would be the blackbird and once they are gone the major debuff against me is taken off the field so there's nobody to restrict my movement if my movement isn't restricted that means i can do excess damage if i can do excess damage that means i can take out the ferox and if the ferox can't hit me or hurt me enough then they don't stand a chance to take down my ship simple is 1 2 3 i make it sound way too simple in that way but similar thing will work for you in pvp 
if you have a fleet of three against your four battleships, uh, you obviously have the advantage. If you have three battleships and there's seven of them, you are at a disadvantage, but you could always play strategies to turn the table against them. Like what I am doing right now, I'm aiming for the right ship to take out the advantage. And when the advantage is gone, I have an advantage, obviously. That is why I go for it. Ooh. Nice little reward from that. It's a nice uh, expensive reward in terms of its... Um, um, what do you call this thing? Scrapping? Those medium items give you quite a bit of resources. Large give you even better resources. Yeah, there we go. You can see I'm doing a little bit more damage to this Ferox right now because I'm not being debuffed. 3,900 is a very good hit against it, although I could do even more if I was more efficient against him. If I had a little bit better weapon system, it most probably would go through the roof on how much I could actually deal. So yeah, that's one of the things you have to think about. Now, moving forward, another thing to think about in high sec is you could always use a little bit more in terms of firepower. Right, as I said, a little bit more, not the C type, just keep it below. If you are going to go C type, remember, if you lose a ship, the insurance becomes heavy and that balance play that I'm talking about becomes almost impossible. As soon as he is gone, I hope that it takes that, then I will have an even easier path forward. And that's the basics of what I want to tell you. You need to be focusing on having those ships ready for your quick and easy plays to make ISK easy in this new um, faction war basically with the new addition of those outer space areas you're going to be really focusing heavy on doing excess damage you're not going to worry all that much about players uh, ganking you because you want to move forward so that's what you're gonna have to do invest in the right ships and pull them out obviously if you're going with the battleship don't even bother about the c-type story that I just said that makes no difference to you in your Raven or your Nightmare or your Balgon. Those ships are so ridiculously expensive, adding another half a billion to them doesn't even hurt the slightest bit. So go full C-Type on it and enjoy yourself. In terms of defense, I would say maximum C-Type. Always keep it at maximum C-Type for defense. That doesn't hurt you in terms of cost effectiveness. All right, so that is gonna be a wrap for it. You do see that there's a private message. I do know where it's coming from, so catch you all in the next one. Have a good day.